And so, okay, go ahead and introduce yourself. Then I'll ask where you guys are calling from and all of that. Sure. I'm Hugh Nini. And I'm Neil Treadwell. And, and we're you... co-authors of Loving a Photographic History of Men in Love. That's the one. That's Eight, it. Eight, it is nine, an nine. amazing book. It's huge. It's so many beautiful, just lovely pictures. So wonderfully put together. So um, how... I guess I'll just start by saying, how long did it take you? I know, well, from, from the time that you got the first, it says 20 years. Does that sound right? Yes. Going, and going how long, but then how long does it take to create something like this? You know, this, this, this hardback, gorgeous book. It was a couple of years finding the right publisher. That, that was the initial step. And then after finding the right publisher, the, what he hired, outside designers uh, from uh, outside of his publishing company who were in Montreal. And uh, they we provided them with s roughly 600 of our over 3000 photo uh, image photo collection uh, to choose, you know, they, uh, they talked initially about doing uh, 250 and then it got bigger and bigger and bigger until it ended up at 327, which is what is in the book now. Yeah. The designers were the ones that were responsible for placing them on the pages and then um, there was a lot of uh, collaboration and back and forth between us, the designers and the publisher. And that process from the time we delivered the photographs or the images to start working with was probably uh, eight months. About eight months. About eight, eight months. Okay. Until we got to the final design and we were ready to go to print. And then it was, uh, I think at that point, a year and a half since we had signed with our publisher. Okay. But it went fast after that we flew the images that are in the book to Italy for them to be scanned in uh, there a year ago today <laughs> uh, yeah actually oh, wow. yeah, today today's the anniversary <laughs> happy, of, anniversary. Of flying. happy <laughs> anniversary today's the anniversary of flying the photos they never left our apartment ever or our house wherever we were they'd never left before and it was very unsettling I would to think. take them out yeah to take them out of the house carry them to the airport get on a plane with them and then hand them over to the color separator yeah. who had driven in from Brussels uh, to meet us to get the uh, images and start doing the scanning and color separating. Wow. So that's what you've been doing since COVID. Yes. That, uh, we, that, that part of it, that Milan. portion of it. COVID broke out in Milan while we were there, but we didn't know it. And then we came back to New York and it broke out here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it just the timings. I, I, have you seen the short documentary uh, about us in the book? I don't know if you've seen that. Or I not. haven't seen that yet. That got completed right before the New York shutdown. They shot part of it in Dallas at our house in Dallas and the uh, second half of it here in New York. Okay. I'll, I'll send you, we'll send you a link to it. Would okay. you say it's entirely possible that you were the carriers that yeah. brought it from <laughs> Milan to no the question. United States? No question. We brought it to Milan, gave it to everybody in Italy, and brought it back to New York. Yeah, wow. we, actually, we actually stopped through uh, Budapest on the way back, so we so we know, left delivered it there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, it's very thoughtful. <laughs> At least we can do. <laughs> yeah. So um, one of the last things I remember reading a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, it, I think Hugh, you posted that the book was like number one hundred and eleven or something yeah. like that on Amazon's bestsellers. Out of total books, which is right. millions of books, millions. Yeah. So, and that was like what a month? So, like about uh, a month after Christmas ish. Roughly, I think I don't recall exactly, but it's been within the last month. I want to say. I mean, yeah. it's it's gone up and down, so it's been really close there twice now. Yeah, uh, it just depends on who you know drops a book out, whether it's Obama or Budapest. And, Buttigieg or, and yeah. all, all of the books in the top one hundred. Uh, actually, like I don't know if Obama's is there or not. All of the books in the top 100 are like $12 to $24 books. Yes. This is a $65 book to get that close to the top 100 is amazing. Yeah. It is amazing. So how did you, who did you, I, I'm assuming you both had faith that it was going to do well, right? Or was it just a passion project that you thought we just want to do it anyway? And if it isn't a success, then it's not a success, but we just really want to have it out there. We just really wanted to have it out there. I mean, it was a, a passion project once we realized that it was going to be a book. Um, and, you know, we didn't know what uh, success would be. 
Um, most art books, they're successful if they sell anywhere from around 4,000 to no less or, you know, yeah, 500 so. to 2,000 is, is sure. the norm. I see. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, we're in our fourth printing now. We went into our second printing two days before the actual launch because yeah. uh, they were selling out and that's globally. It's in uh, the books in five languages now. Um, two weeks sure. after we launched, uh, we picked up a, a, a Spanish publisher and it launched the second week in November. So that was our fifth language. We're in German, Italian, French, Spanish, and English. Wow. Very we, cool. we, we anticipate a Portuguese and a Japanese co-publisher within the year. Okay. Wow. And so how are you um, balancing that with your regular work life? Well, my, well, I'm a ballet teacher, so there's no ballet class going on right now. No, right. I coach privately one-on-one -on -one, uh, okay. five days a week, but that only takes up a small amount of my, of my time. And Neil left and his position. I'd left my position and was going to, I've done a little bit of consulting in the uh, cosmetic industry, but it you know freed up plenty of time for us to go full force Thank God. In, we have into this. We built a website. We launched a, a nonprofit uh, with, with the book so that we could... Uh, do the limited edition signed and numbered books that we have of a thousand and all of then, the proceeds from that uh, sale go to the launches and exhibitions in the u.s and the international launch in frankfurt germany so yeah we were supposed to be doing a, a, a mm -hmm. book tour across europe in october we we're going to start with the frankfurt book fair and then do brussels france and italy then come back to the u.s and so that's all been canceled off my god uh, hopefully yeah. Now, knock on wood, we'll be able to do it this October uh, right. because they're saying Frankfurt should be open back up and hopefully we'll be in a good enough position here in the States that they'll let people from the U.S. into other countries. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, are you, um, are you in New York right now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you have as much snow as we have. Does that sound right? We got about 18 inches. So it's, and, where, it, and it's still white. So where are you? I forgot. So we're Where in Allentown, Pennsylvania. So a little, uh, a little west of Philadelphia, and yeah, we so got you got more northwest, right? Yeah. yeah. Say it again. You got, you got more snow, didn't you? We did. I think about, we got about two feet. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking in our backyard right now. I'm looking in the backyard as though I, as though I have a measuring stick in my head that's going to translate. <laughs> um, but, but you know, we're we're men, so we're going to say it's two feet, but it's probably closer to like twelve inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so has this allowed? So, has the time that you haven't been able to do book signings and touring with the book? Um, I, I'm assuming you guys have been doing. I think I've seen that you've been doing um, some of this kind of stuff, so that you can get out there and talk to the people that are buying the book, and that have been. And I've read some of the things that you've posted, and I did go on a couple of links that you had reading people people sharing what this book means to them, you know, by seeing these people that were brave enough to have their photos taken mm -hmm. back in the, you know, mid 1800s. It's, it's an open question as to um, how much intolerance existed back then as compared to today because we are literally living in the best of times and the worst of times best of times in that neil and i are married and as of 2003 we were no longer criminals in the privacy of our own home in texas and um the worst of times in that there's just there's a you know an anti-gay industrial complex that exists now that did not exist then there are people whose full-time job it is to persecute gay people they get paid money for it and that didn't exist back then. And what we what we sort of have picked up on is that while, yeah, it wasn't ideal, people sort of went along and went, well, you know, that's just the way my brother is or my son or whatever. And uh, and then there probably were some, you know, less than desirable outcomes. But we do see some uh, community and family support within the uh, photos in our collection. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a there are two pages in the book that shows two gatherings. Mm -hmm of friends oh, were the yeah. yes that's not as unusual as you would think yeah yeah so as i went through it steve steve said to me he goes so what'd you think and i said i couldn't get past 
who was the photographer? I couldn't even like, I, I, I totally enjoy, especially the 1800s photos. I couldn't even really enjoy the photos because I'm like, how are they on a beach doing this and nobody's up in arms? And and so I, I, I like history, but you know, nobody ever, you know, high school, college history, nobody ever talked about, you know, how how gay people were accepted or not. I, you know, I just assume based off of what I know about, you know, civil war type things, I, I think, oh God, well, we must have been less than black people. So how were these people not stoned on the beach kind of thing? No. No. no, I don't think so. And, you know, with with the evolution of photography and going into the tin type. So the tin type that, that camera was actually taken out into uh, during the Civil War out into the field because it, there's not a, a negative. It's uh, produced onto the positive, onto the metal and the coating. Mm -hmm. So they were out there taking photographs and within 15 minutes, they were handing that piece of tin to whoever it was that they were taking a photograph. Usually it was for someone to send back home to their relatives, but you know, in the case of, of two gay men, you could slip your your hand into one guy's thigh, like one of the photos, or something really interesting, um, and it was caught for prosperity for those two people. And it wasn't like, oh, now there's a negative, and I can share this with everyone and get them into mm -hmm. trouble. You know, that was even a thing. Check out the very first photograph in the book. There's a tell in that photograph that makes it a 100% absolute certainty that this is a couple. It this is how clever and and to, and answering that a little further who took the picture yep that one yep see if you can find it and i'll just uh, say say a couple of things number one we found it you're well, fast so they're, they're holding hands but their legs are also crossed oh it's way more than that way more going. than that yeah we, we we bought it on the look that they have them on their faces but and it wasn't until hugh scanned it in about three or four years later and we were were able to blow it up that we were up yeah the one guy has so, his hand on his inner thigh his upper thigh there yeah. you go yeah. right <laughs> there you go and there are lots of little things like that but and, you know to your point about who took the photograph these these guys had friends they had other gay friends and also you could take your own photograph if you read in our essay you could uh, uh there was an automatic timer for for your camera as early as 1902 and it looks to us like many of these were taken by the couples themselves. Yeah. But at the same time, there, it, there's no, um, this, the, two, the one page it's stacked, uh, two pictures of a, uh, two sailors who are a couple and they're surrounded mm -hmm. by the other sailor. And they're in a very ro romantic embrace. So, mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what, what life was like for them, but I can tell you that yeah. on the backs of those photographs are written some really beautiful, funny things about them being a couple. Yeah, wow. It's just weird. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't help but think that, you know, looking at it, I'm like, these people are acting in public in what I would consider ye olde times, um, mm -hmm. different than, than I would act going out in public with him now. Like there's right. so much more, like I would never think to sit at the beach, you know, right on the water and like, you know, intercross our legs for a picture. <laughs> Well, unless we're on Fire Island or at right, Beach right. and yeah. something and like we that. Yeah. We have tons of photographs like the one, Gary, right, Gary? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That Gary just described that are just covered with people in the background and they're just taking the picture and it's no big deal. Yeah. Bizarre. I think people are, for the most part, probably just focused on what they're doing at the beach. Right? And I also, mean, I don't think they were as focused on other people's personal lives the way they have become in our lifetime, especially, you know, with the Anita Bryant thing in the early, early 1980s. I mean, stuff like that is really a modern day uh, thing. Yeah. That didn't exist. That didn't exist a long time ago. It was never a national campaign. Right. So, and I don't want to focus on the negative and we'll jump right away from it, but have mm -hmm. you had any, um, have you had any negative? Sorry, can I do mine, honey? That, there's been, you know, well, based on, you know, the percentage wise and what we thought we would get, yeah, I would say 99% positive, 1% negative. And the, the, the criticism that the book is getting is that there aren't more people of color in the book, the people of color. And let us explain this. We have over 30,000, 30,000, I wish, <laughs> we have over 3,000 photos in our collection. And we have collected every single photograph of an African-American or biracial couple that we've come across, every single one. And that number's about 30. 
And of the 30, only two were of sufficient quality as most of the collection was not of sufficient quality to be used in the book. And so, yeah. you know, right. number one, the photographs just aren't out there. We'd have them if they were out there. We'd have yeah. bought them, we'd have tons more. And sure. by the way, they're so rare that, you know, when you do find one, it's gonna be a very expensive photograph. You're gonna pay for it. So yeah. we do have yeah. the two. And, but other than that, there's just not that many. And uh, unfortunately, you know, people don't allow, don't give us the opportunity to explain that. Neil, Neil and I's lives are so yeah. diverse. I mean, our, our community of friends and family are just, you know, looks like uh, we are the world or whatever. I mean, everyone likes to, to you know, pick something that they're going to go after. And the, another one was about age discrimination in it. Right. And, you know, we look at it this way. Like, it was, no, no, not, yeah. no was, not at all in a negative, not at all in a negative way. But I said, oh, I find I, I didn't even notice uh, the minorities. Um, but I noticed at the end, I said, oh, it's interesting that most most were all very young couples. And it's not that we're looking for you know, no, two know. cute guys or right. anything, but you know, we were we were we compare it to our own life. When we were first together, we took photos all the time. Sure. Yeah. They were, they were trying to get a photo 30 of years us later we're not because, so excited about taking a photograph but i mean together. they were saying can you give us a, a headshot of you guys now and we were <laughs> right. going to have one taken but COVID happened and we didn't get one taken so we're going through photos we're like well crap we don't we don't really have any all of them are you know well we I don't look like that here. anymore <laughs> yeah. so I, that's a big part of it or they just you know they just don't exist sure yeah. there was, a time where you would have, you know, maybe because photography wasn't always uh, inexpensive, you would, you know, spend money on, on one or two photos and that was it. And that's what you kept. I yeah, mean, yeah. we still look at each other and think we look the same we did when we met. Right. So we don't need another photo. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it is funny that you don't have a photo of yourselves for a photo book that you put together <laughs> that has, you know. We, we had planned on getting one taken and then right. yeah. shut down. Yep. We didn't see this coming, even though we brought it to Italy and then to New York. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, fun. Um, so, so are you, I, I mean, so it sounds like you have a lot more photos. Are you thinking about doing a second volume or some of those aren't of the quality you're saying to? Oh, no, we well, got plenty more. We, we have tons, you know, yeah. was, that was just one of the ways of kind of um, sorting through the photos that we wanted in the first book uh we are planning on doing a second book um and probably it'll be uh men in the military men in uniform because 20 yeah. percent probably of our collection is uh the military yeah and it all the way back to civil war uh we have collected from around the world so there's actually some wars that the u.s wasn't in so you know there's so it's a good Soldiers variety from foreign countries in, in uniform so we don't know yeah. if they were actively fighting at the time or not but uh, yeah Lots, lots of uh, military photos, and and so again, really quick. I, I I really enjoy history and and took it a lot in high school and college, even if I didn't have to. But um, they just never talked about this kind of thing. I said to Steve, I said, so that you guys have the fifty fifty rule. I read that that you need to be pretty confident that it is what it is. But I said to Steve, I said, I, you know, with how expensive film was. You know, not we didn't just take selfies back then, and I was like, I just can't, I cannot wrap my head around a man sitting in another man's lap in uniform for a photo. That they were just friends. It's just, it's just. What do you, what do you know that I don't know about? You know, like you know, Civil War best buddies. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that movie. No. <laughs> there's, there's um. There, there's a, you know, it's really easy. What you're seeing, no, number one, there are no 50-50 photographs in this book. Okay. We have about maybe 200 in the collection, maybe. And we only buy them if they're inexpensive because, you know, we, we um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There's the, there's, there is one 50-50, but it's, yes, to there, compare, it's to compare to one that's 150. Let me just start <laughs> the real quick the question. We collected five photographs of these two soldiers and they were 50-50. Mm -hmm. And we looked at them and we said, you know, we said, we think there's a relationship there. And so we got them because they were $10 each. And we bought them you know, on five different occasions. And, and one of them is in the book. I'm going to cover up the top one. Don't worry. I got this down. <laughs> so there's the 50-50. Oh, yes. Yep. Then 
about two months later, this showed up. Same two. <laughs> wow. Nice. So we're pretty confident about our ability to detect, you know, something in a 50 photograph. Yep. That being said, we didn't want to use any for the book. And also what you're not seeing are the literally tens of thousands that we did not collect that were 4951. You know, it's just like, cause, cause you know, two guys in the military or two friends or whatever would, you know, our arm around the shoulder yeah, I mean, or this something is like one that. Thing. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. But this is a right. different, and right. when they're leaning their eyes, you know, there's different. Well, and, that, and, that, and what you said, that made it so much clearer when you said there, there are no 50 fifties in this book, because I read, I read the whole opening and I read, and I read the synopsis that, that, that Steve had given me. And then I went through the book and I'm like, I'm not questioning any of these, like, these <laughs> at all. <laughs> these are all hundred percent of yeah. And yeah. we have lots, more, lots it's, more. It's interesting. The people who uh, on occasion through Facebook or social media of any kind, they'll comment and say, well, how do they know that they are? Or they'll comment that there's no way. Um, and then we ask, we'll say, well, have you looked at the book? No. They're always making yeah, their judgment oh, sure. on their, you know, what's in their head. They haven't seen any of the photos in the book. They haven't I never them. touch any of my girlfriend's thighs. That's usually a, <laughs> it's a good giveaway. Well, not their upper thigh anyway. Sure. Yeah. So have you, I know there was something going on with Elton John. What's going on with Elton John? He had his, he had this propping up something. And then you guys were saying that you were trying to contact him and what, yeah. so, well, so, so a lot of that's off the record, probably. What oh, I see. Okay. Oh. So you, but but what what we did have is I mean w through social media I have so many eyes and ears now through or we do through Instagram so if something pops up and there's someone we're not following it gets shot to us so fast so there was someone going oh my God El Elton John's doing an interview with Leroy Kid Leroy who no one knows who Kid Leroy is so I was happy to know that I wasn't the only one but um, he they said check this out so here he it's a back shot and on there and it's he has his computer stacked up on books you you know uh, positioning is everything and on a photograph and there's no way in hell that he didn't do this on purpose because right. the book is stacked up there's a piece of paper that slides up there's Leroy's face right under loving the computer's here Loving is the only one you can read. Thank God yes. this is a great logo on the side of it. Yeah, oh my book. God. exactly. But, Perfect. And it was right in the center of the photo. So the whole time it's there. So, you know, it just shows that Elton John bought our book because we didn't yeah. send it to him. And, uh, and there's something else we can tell you off the record yeah. after the interview is over with. Okay, sure. Well, I didn't know. So I, I was feeling bad for you guys. So I thought I would just do... <laughs> <laughs> and I was prepared to sing your song, but we'll do karaoke another night when we when we are together. <laughs> we did that at our we played had someone sing that at our wedding in 2006. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this was a leftover from that, or yeah, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so we had no idea that karaoke was a thing on these. I, we just thought this you were joking the whole time. So I'm originally from Maine and a guy from Bangor, Maine started quarantine karaoke. And it was soon after he started it, it reached like, I don't know, tens of thousands of people were joining this because they were at home and quarantining and bored. And so they were joining and there's some really amazing um, people, especially um, uh, maybe physically handicapped people and stuff that that are joining in and sharing their yeah. talents and it's just really heart heart I don't want to say heart wrenching but it it just fills your heart with joy yeah. to see to see that ours would be like fingernails on a chalkboard on the floor. well <laughs> and and that's when this whole thing started he brief, we love we both love karaoke um he is actually a good singer I am not but I still enjoy it and I, I you know if I have enough drinks I don't care. Um, but you know, you have this, when you go out somewhere, you have the sound system to back you up and these people doing it from their homes for COVID, I was like, I have neither the singing, dancing, any of it to make up for the fact that I don't have giant speakers yeah. covering my <laughs> poor performance. A bit, yeah. So yeah. We, we have not participated. 
So but I know he misses it. So you've been doing a lot online. Is that correct? Are, are you doing, I, I'm assuming you're doing other interviews. Are, are you talking with people individually online? Yeah. Yeah. We've, Great. we've done zoom. Uh, we've done some TV through, through zoom as well. Uh, we have over 175 unique articles that have been written around the world on the book, keeping up with all yeah. the press. Not all of it was from our, from um, us entering uh, questions and everything, but you know, it, but that's not shared. It's not like CNN was shared 50 times. These were all just very unique, all unique articles. And and so. uh, the, the Guardian just reposted the article they did on the book last fall on their Facebook page. And a response on the Guardian will, you know, an article will generally get about 500 responses, you know, mm -hmm. like we have 12,000. Wow, I saw that post yesterday or the day before. That's amazing. And it's it's been amazing that it's touching people. Yeah, yeah and they're sharing it. There's a 2,000 shares on it. Oh, right. Three shares, yeah. and this one has 2,000 plus, and yeah, and way and just a huge number of comments as well. It's just and it, the same thing happened when they did the article the first time. Yeah, you were asking earlier, and I uh, do you know just how it touches people. And we've been getting so many emails and uh, through um, through our personal accounts and because of the book and through Instagram of people just saying what the book means to them and who they have bought it for and grandparents buying it for their grandchildren. Um, there's a, one of Hugh's former students whose dad came out very late in his life. He's male student, heterosexual male student. And his dad's in his seventies. And so he bought it for his dad Which and it's just came out late in life. And it's just, it's yeah. the way that they're connecting with, with family because yeah, they see yeah. the loving photos. They've never been able to eat, to, if that, that's not what you hear about. You, you know, they think right. about sex all the time. It's not about a loving couple. And here's a book packed full of people showing that they had a beautiful life together and they yeah. want that to, um, they see that, that that can happen for their kids now. Right. Yeah, and it's not risque. It's it's something you can have out on the coffee table and, oh, right. you know, and share at a, uh, a Christmas gift. It's not, you know, there's there's nothing obscene or, or anything right. like that that would be questionable it's it's really but if just you could make one lovely. that was a little obscene that would be appreciated that, 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 there's that's plenty pretty, of those that's out pretty there. well covered <laughs> you know yeah it's so interesting I, we will I tell you this that when this whole thing started we did not realize that we were starting a collection for years for years we came across the first one it was about 80 years old our only intention attention was to keep it alive for another 80 years if that's how long we would live and then the second one showed up and then you know a couple more and then a couple more it, we were hundreds into it before we realized we were really doing any collecting we just thought we were oh you know preserve this make sure it lasts you know sure a, yeah we the, and then we didn't show it to anyone because we, you know, we were like, what are they thinking? You know, we're collecting pictures of dead men. Right. Or, or, you know, it's just, we thought it was interesting, but we didn't think anyone else would think it was For 13 years, for 13 years, nobody knew we were collecting these and no one knew, had seen the collection, obviously. And we didn't have, there was not, it was no part of us that thought anybody would be interested in this collection at all. There was never even a discussion about. Oh, that's that. so funny. It's so, uh, yeah, it's. In hindsight, I in mean, hindsight, I'm mad. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> we, we should have been doing this. We picked up a couple too at, um, like you guys did at flea markets, flea markets or whatever yeah. yard sales. Um, actually, I'm gonna run and get one quick. I'll be right back. Yeah, we'd find them and we'd be like, "Oh, what a goof!" And then we'd just like, you know, think nothing of it. And, Oh, it's too, too funny. You know, we felt like, you know, a family, you know, at the, by the time we get it, that means that, you know, someone's probably passed away. The family don't want them or there's no family to take the photos. Right. So sure. They end up in a box or just who knows how they get where we well, were the, able to find them. There's the story and, in our essay of John Moore. I love, I was just going to bring that up. I love the story where they said, take care, take care of this. Ta yeah. We pair yeah. to please. Please uh, keep these safe. After. Please keep these safe. And I just thought that was so cute. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. We just came across a few. They were just old photos. And in a few of them are, you know, possibly uh, 49, 51 <laughs> instead of 50, 50. But anyway, there's. That could, uh, it's hard to tell. We'd have to get a little bit closer to look at it. But yeah, we that could fall into the 50, 50 category. That would not. This would be like a family portrait, I would imagine. Yeah. And then yeah. these guys are also there's three that are a little cozier. That, uh, yeah, I don't know. We just found these at like a flea market in a in a plastic bag that someone had. 
Well, so, well ten million dollars for the set, take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually they're actually photos of Gary and I dressed up in the backyard. I think not. <laughs> I do want to know what was going on in this picture, though, because the guy's looking away from the camera. I'm, I'm not really sure. That is an interesting pose to strike for a photo. Yes. No. Right. I, I, that would cause a stir. Yeah. Well, if you want any of them, they're yours. <laughs> uh, anyway, so so much luck, much success. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you've already had the success. It was a lot of hard work, uh, obviously well earned and not really luck, I don't think. Um, and just fantastic all the way around. Do you want to share anything else with people that will be watching this? Um, no, I think that, you know, I, I, yeah, we would like to share something. Um, the book and the collection are a message that's universal and it has it is literally appeals to everybody. Uh, heterosexual people, um, gay, um, female couples, uh, single people um, of all kinds. And um, the thing that I think the, the, the reason the message of the book is, is so uh, solid is that it is laser focused on the fact that these couples were in love with each other, that their male couples is secondary. And people, you know, see this, this collection, they see the message of the collection and it touches them. And so we have very deliberately not described them as gay or homosexual. You won't find that in our essay anywhere. We don't have those pictures. We have pictures of two people who are in love with each other. We can extrapolate from that that they're probably yeah. gay, but we don't say that because what we want to do is we want to keep the message focused on love, which is yeah. what the book is about, love and humanity. And it's a common theme that we can all you know, get around and, and uh, be, in, be supportive of. And sec second, I mean, to follow up, not to follow up on the message, but just let you know that, you know, we are looking at having an exhibition in New York in June, uh, more to come on that, but there will be an opportunity to see um, blown up photographs that are in the book, possibly some that aren't in the book, um, but will be, um, uh, it's going to be big. It's going to be big. Yeah, yeah. there'll be cool. sixty images in it. So it was supposed to happen on Valentine's Day, but uh, New York doesn't allow more than ten people inside a, a facility. So we're pushing it off to June now. Good. That was wise. Yeah. Excellent. Um, so I'm going to stop recording. Oh, yeah. But thank yeah. you very much for thank you for taking this time with us. I don't know. Were you guys doing happy hour? We were doing happy hour. Did oh you? no! <laughs> it's a, Damn it! All right. Well, next time. We, we'll get happy tonight at dinner. <laughs> okay. Happy tonight at dinner, and we'll do a rain check on karaoke. Let me just stop the recording, but thank you very much for joining us um, this, uh, this afternoon to share all this information about loving, and people should order this book uh, as soon as they get done watching this video. And the it, signed and limited dedicated edition, is st we still have a few of those left. It's a, limit, it's a limited edition of 1,000, and I think we have about 100 left. Okay, and where can they get that? Loving loving one thousand dot org. Okay, and Better. it's uh, one zero zero thousand. It's the one thousand is one zero zero. Okay. Loving one thousand dot org. Very good. All right, I'm going to pause this.